Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So I have a DPF issue here on a Ford Galaxy S Max and it's vehicle conditions incorrect. So let's uh, talk about that. Okay, so I'm just inside the vehicle here. We'll uh, start it up and you'll see that we have an engine management light on there. I'm going to use the launch Euro Tab 3 diagnostic tool here to have a look at the codes. So we have particle filter soot restriction, particle filter soot restriction again, that just means that this code means that the power is limited and this one just says that the accumulation is too high. Vehicle conditions are incorrect for a particle filter regeneration, P246B. And we've also got this one here for the grill shutter module and another soot accumulation code there. So you can clearly see that the DPF has got an issue and it's blocked up, but why is it blocked? So this code here indicates that something is stopping the vehicle from regenerating on its own because there's the conditions are not right. Now what does that mean? That can mean almost anything. That's the difficult part of it. It doesn't really give you any specifics to why the conditions are not right, but something is not right. So. This code here is a part of the grill shutter which um, closes the grill on the front when the engine's cold to get it to warm up quicker and improve emissions. Now, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've not dealt with this code on one of these before uh, regarding a DPF, but as far as I'm concerned, anything that's related to your engine or the emissions, anything that deals with helping lower the emissions is going to affect the DPF. So. I'd assume that these either want to close or open during the regeneration and it's failing to do so, so it's cutting off the region. And one of the other, so there's plenty of other, other issues that can that can cause vehicle conditions incorrect. So I'm going to go through some of them here on, a, on this video. We'll just point this video at this code. So if we go back uh, to live data on this scan tool here, we go to data stream and we'll go to some of the most common things I see, so which is temperatures. These are one of the, some of the most common things that can stop your DPF from regenerating. So these are all the temps here. So we're going to select all of them. I think this is a, it's probably something that not a lot of people check. I've been to so many DPF problems that have had brand new DPFs. They've put a new turbo on, new all the new sort of parts that go around the DPF, like your EGR valve. They've put new temperature sensors on, new new DPF pressure sensors, and they're still having issues. Um, I've had probably six or seven Peugeot boxers come in which nobody could figure out what the problem was, and this little temperature gauge down here, the ambient temperature outside of the vehicle, if that's blank, your DPF won't regenerate. So you'll have a little blank line or two little blank lines depending on what sort of vehicle you have. Now that sensor is usually in a bumper on most cars, but on the Peugeot Boxer it's located inside the wing mirror. So that's the ambient temperature there. Uh, that's this one. So if that's not getting a reading, you will have an issue. So that's just the voltage there. Where's the ambient temperature? There we have the ambient outside temperature there. It's a little bit incorrect on there, 19 degrees. It's not definitely not that warm. Uh, probably about 12 I'd say uh, so if that's not getting a reading you will have an issue and of course your voltages there need to be there as well air charge temperature sensor quite common on Ford's Ford Transit uh, that's usually located along the intercooler hose um, sometimes they can be I suppose built into the MAF sensor as well catalyst temperature sensors uh, coolant temperature sensor now either that cannot be working or one of the more common common things for it is it does work but I'll show you now an issue that we've been having here so this vehicle's been running for about 20 minutes and I've been trying to get the temperature up and you'll see there it doesn't want to go I can't even get it to 80 but ideally that should go up to 90 degrees is where the optimum temperature temperature should be while it's regenerating um, minimum I think it should be is around about 81 degrees but uh, we've been trying to get it warm here for some time it doesn't look like it's going to get there but we'll we'll have a look at that if that doesn't reach that temperature 
you're not gonna have your regeneration be successful so that's another thing to look out for there and of course these exhaust gas temperature sensors if any of those are giving you silly readings you know like it's uh, close to 1200 degrees as soon as you start it up or it's, it's on zero when you've been accelerating it for a fair while or it's it's too low you usually get these maybe start off at 60 degrees but as soon as you start it up they should go over 100 um, and they should reach a couple of hundred pretty quickly once you give them a few accelerations and they usually sit around depending on the vehicle again different vehicles sit at different temperatures but you usually see these somewhere between four to eight hundred degrees during a proper regeneration uh, external temperatures we've got all these so all of these temperatures basically should be working um, I've not ever dealt with one with the fuel temperature um, being related to a DPF but then again you'll, you never know each different car intake temperature sensor again that can be part of the MAF sensor any of the cooling temperatures there is uh, definitely a good place to look if you're having uh, this cold uh, so what I might do is just take the vehicle for a test drive and see if that temperature increases because it doesn't diesels are quite hard to get the temperature up especially when you're sitting stationary and again with these Ford uh, some Volvo models Peugeot are fitted with the uh, vaporizer system now if this exhaust gas doesn't really reach a good temperature again that can set off if it doesn't reach a high enough temperature it won't uh, won't regenerate uh, or it will it will regenerate until a certain time and the temperature doesn't reach and it will cut off it will just give up and again your vaporizer itself what we need to do to test a vaporizer is either take off the hoses and check if there's pressure I've got plenty of videos on those if you want to have a look at vaporizers but you need to either check the pressure by connecting a vacuum uh, pressure gauge to it or you can dismantle the whole part take it out and uh, see if see if you're getting you know air flowing through it or you can take it out go to special functions if you if you remove it from the the dpf take it out and go to on this model here and here it's in the power control modules in the in the special functions we'll go to vaporizer prime this is just a way you can do it without removing it so we're going to prime up the vaporizer and then you'll get a timer come up And you should hear a pulsing coming from the floor you won't hear it here on the video but you can hear it so that means that the fuel pumps working but what you're going to want to do now is now that the vehicle has been warm this will only work if the vehicle is warm you need to get the exhaust really hot and while that's working and you accelerate it you should see a lot of white smoke coming from the exhaust pipe <laughs> see there this one we're not really getting any smoke so we seem to be getting zero smoke at all which indicates that the vaporizer is blocked on this one if you get a small amount of smoke if the vaporizer could be partially blocked um, but you should see quite a fair bit of smoke coming out so just in here you've got the grill shutters uh, these little plastic bits here they should close and open and I can hear that the fan is on on this vehicle which is not a good sign the fans on and it's not hot it's not hot so I've just been having a look see if we can see any sort of fuse issues with the uh, grill shutter but uh, I think that may be some sort of issue with the, the module which is located behind the bumper so we'll get all of these items back up and we'll take it for a little test drive see if we are getting these temperatures get to the right areas where they should be um, I sh we should see these going over 200 and we should see where are we coolant temperature this one we should see that going 85 to 90 sort of 192 and where what else have we got here air charge differential pressure so just change that over to HPA reading which is a little bit more finer and accurate so we've got 20 millibars um, it's come down a little bit it was on 26 earlier uh, but obviously we've been giving the vehicle some revs there and trying to get the vaporizer working yeah so this differential pressure we we'd like to see that under 10 ideally around 5 or below 5 as close to 0 as possible but uh, below 10 is okay so we're going to take it for a test drive now see if we can get this coolant temperature up 
Okay, we've just been on a couple of miles trip and it's not going past 74 degrees. So you can see there that wasn't really successful. And this is why it's important to check all of these sort of temperatures. I've, I've seen so many people say that they've been somewhere and they've had a new DPF or they've had the DPF cleaned and, you know, within a couple of days the problem's back because they found one issue. So, you, like, I found that issue with the vaporizer. Now, you could assume, okay, the vaporizer's a problem. Let's clean the DPF, fix the vaporizer and send them underway. Then the customer has the problem come back and they're not happy. Um, so if you find more problems like the thermostat, you can either repair the thermostat there yourself or tell the customer, look, we can clean the DPF or you can go get your thermostat fixed or we can fix the thermostat first, then come back and clean the DPF or we can clean your DPF now. As long as you take, you don't drive the car and you take it straight in and have the thermostat replaced before you continue driving it, otherwise the DPF problem will come back. As long as you identify the problem and tell them uh, which is the main point for me um, just let them know that you know that you've got that issue and if you do drive it it will you will have an issue return but really the safest way is is to uh, have the issues fixed first then clean your DPF okay so this vehicle is only on currently about 71 degrees the fans have just came on which does indicate again that there's an issue with the thermostat and you can hear the fans there are working quite quite hard there. So your thermostat is located down here. Uh, so that's one of the issues again. Um, other issues that can cause sort of your regeneration not to work. Boost hoses, splits on your boost hoses, splits or, or failures on the intake hoses. So you're not getting the right air reading. This vehicle has got an issue with the uh, injectors there, which is that's not related to the DPF. So you've got boost hoses leaking, inlet pipes leaking, thermostats not reaching temperature, stuck closed EGR valves, which would be uh, on this engine. Sorry, I'm a little bit stuck on that one. It's hard to keep track of every different engine. I sort of get a brain freeze sometimes. Uh, EGR valve down there somewhere. Again, throttle body, you get the flaps inside that can stick. So there's so many issues that can cause DPF problems and each different vehicle does behave differently. So you'll get one vehicle that won't regenerate because of a certain fault and other vehicles will regenerate because of that fault. So you just each vehicle is sort of different. And again, you got uh, vehicle conditions incorrect or the driving conditions were incorrect. Can be sometimes, you know, that the person who owns it is just going to the local supermarket which is less than a mile away and returning every day or they're going to drop the kids to school doing less than a mile journey every day i get people all the time say oh i only drive my car to work which is eight or ten miles away so that's why i'm having dpf problems as long as your vehicle is getting you're driving it long enough to get the temperature up and it's getting warm you're driving it long enough for the region so that's that's one thing that can uh, sort of be cleared up a little bit if you're driving less than a mile or so, you know, your vehicle's not getting warm. But if you're driving long enough to get your vehicle warm, that's fine. You don't need to drive it for an hour. Uh, as long as you're driving it long enough that the temperature gets to 90 degrees. So the question is now, uh, what do I do here with this cu customer? I um, found quite a few different issues with it. So um, it can be expensive. You know, when you quote someone to clean a DPF, you find these problems and it's not so simple. It can turn out to be quite an expensive fix because the thermostat on this is quite a quite a big unit. It's not just a little cheap uh, circular thermostat that's going to need replacing. The vaporizers are going to need replacing. The DPS going to need cleaning. Uh, she's also got issues with the injectors over there, uh, which is not relevant to this repair. But that's uh, uh, another story. Uh, so with this one, it's not one I've dealt with before, so I haven't got a lot of. Um, experience on this code if it affects the dpf i would assume and say yes it does because what this is for is is it's all related to the emissions and your fuel mile per gallon it's to get the vehicle warm and it's to improve improve miles per gallon and lower your emissions so i'd say yes that would affect it but uh, of course if you've got experience on that you can comment on the video um now, if I if the customer wanted me to just say, okay, can you just go ahead and clean the DPF and we'll see how it goes, I wouldn't warranty give any warranty about coming back to clean the DPF because of this code. I'd say, look, if you want to get it done, you've got these codes here. If you've got any sort of fault codes in your vehicle, then assume that those are going to affect your DPF. And if you've got fault codes there that are not related to the DPF, 
um, then again there's no warranty if you want to clean it it's down to you um, um, so that's uh, part of my view on that so one we've got the grill shutter two we've got the thermostats not reaching temperature on this the exhaust temperature is not reaching temperature because of the vaporizer that's blocked so that's four issues there or well well those are two of the same issues so let's say three um we've got the flap the the thermostat the vaporizer so we've got those three different issues before you can even start fixing your dpf so hopefully that'll stop um or you know help a lot of people deal with some of these issues that i see every day you know i would either get other people come out to clean a dpf and the customer or the and the customer has the problem come back so they come back and try and clean it again and they're all scratching their heads what's going on if you've got these sort of issues you know you're wasting your time cleaning your dpf because the problem will come back so i hope that sort of so answers a lot of questions for people and i'll see you on another video